got to build the self-esteem of our people. We got to build the self-esteem up of our people. Most people, they look at the white man and they have an inferiority complex. When we look at the white man, we see them as above ourselves. And that we have a lower self-esteem and image of ourselves. Do you think that? That's true, right? What we teach you today is the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We are the true Israelites the Bible speak of. And we're going to show you something that he said about these other nations. That we settling it for the crumbs of society. We settling it for the dust of society. But the whole world is ours, Derek. The whole world is ours. Blacks and Hispanics, absolutely. Who got the worst school systems? I know why. So called blacks and Hispanics. Who, who fills the prisons at an alarming rate? Black and Hispanic people. This is a, this is called a curse from God. Read up. Hey, curse shall thou be in the field. And curse shall you be in the field. This is the South, right? Who picked the cut? Who picked the tobacco? to the Japanese after they bombed them. They gave reparations to uh, uh, Amalek, the so-called Jewish man, after World War II. But after we built this economy, brother, after we made everything possible, made America the most richest nation on earth through slave labor, what did they give us for it? What did they give us for? You know what they gave us for? They burnt crosses in front of our house, Esther. They, they burned down our successful towns that we created. They dropped bombs on us for after that. Even to this day, they gun us down. They, yeah, it's a skinny experiment. That's a good point right there. You, you been uh, paying attention to history. They gave us syphilis and experiments. Even to this day, they get they experimenting on us at an alarming rate. After we built up this, or this whole economy. This is called a what? Read again, and what? A curse shall thou be in the field. That's a curse, brother. That's a curse. What we fail to realize is we've been facing generational curses that have been put on us because of the agreement we made with the most high God in the time after the exodus. And we have failed to come back and keep our part of the agreement. We can have blessings if enough of us repent, we can make a a major change in what we see today. But you know what we gotta do? Put down the weed. We gotta, we gotta uh, marry the black woman. The black woman gotta submit to her black man. We, we have to fix our communities in order to get this curse up off us. Because right now, we had a terrible state. We had a terrible state. Let's get some more of this history. Jump up to uh, what I want. Let's go 48. Who you got? The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 48. Uh huh. Therefore, now therefore, read, shalt thou serve thine enemy. Who was the people we serve today? Who was the enemy that we served? Nobody want to say? I know y'all ain't nervous. I know, I know we in the South, but that, look, man, don't be scared. Who, you say the devil, right? You say the devil. Okay, we're going to get some details on this enemy. Because I agree, it is the devil. But I just don't think well, you talk about the same devil that I'm talking about. I'm going to show you. Read what you got. Come on. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Read. And hunger. And hunger. When you hungry, who's the devil you got to go to get your groceries? Read up. The so-called white man. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right. Read up. And in dirt. When you thirsty, y'all pay a bill out here. I don't know what it's called. What y'all call it? Uh, Riley Water and Sewage? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Something like that, right? Who who you send the money to? The, who the devil you send the money to? The white man, so-called white man. Read up. And in nakedness. In nakedness. Or the clothes on your back right now, they got tags on them. Do they say made in North Carolina? No, it don't. What they say made? Absolutely. These are our enemies as well. Why? Because they manufacture everything we do. Even if you you got style, you say I'm gonna come up with my own uh, label. I'm gonna come up with my own brand. You still gotta go get the textiles from them. Right. You still, you, yeah, whether it's Fubu, Shine John, even if, if a black man got his put his name on it. 
he still got to go to them to put it out. And as a nation, we're not supposed to operate like that. We're supposed to be able to be functional by ourselves. But listen, look good. Read what you got. And in what of all things? It's saying one of all things. How many of y'all wanted an education when you was young? Who did you have to go to when you wanted an education? You had to go to the white man. You. Let's say you want, uh, let's say you have a loved one that passed away. You want to get him a good burial. Who you got to go get that death certificate right. from? Right. So called white man. And one of all things, you want a driver's license? Mr. White Man, please. You want, you want to, uh, you, you need food stamps because inflation is, uh, is hella high? Mr. White Man, please. You got to go to this same white man. If you want paper towel or tissue paper to wipe your behind, Mr. White Man, I just, I got to use it so bad, sir. Can I get, can I get you down here? Can I get you down here, wipes, sir? We have to serve this man in one of all things. Now, somebody out there right now, they saying, no, nah, I don't think that's talking about the white man. I don't think so. That couldn't be, no, not the white man. I love the white man. We're going to go more detail. Read what you got. And he shall put a yoke of earth upon thy neck. Who put this yoke of earth? Who put these chains on our neck? Who did it? It's because somebody's out right now. They said, that's, that's racist. I don't see that. But is this racist or is this history? Not only is it history, what we find it out today is biblical prophecy. Right. It's not racist at all. Read on. Until he had destroyed thee. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Read it one more time before you end. Until he had destroyed thee. Until he have destroyed thee. Right now, we don't have chains on our neck no more, right? What does that mean? That means we have been destroyed. Because he said you gonna have chains on your neck until he have destroyed you. You've been destroyed. Why? Because when I asked you earlier, what's your nationality? You you was black, African American. You didn't know you was Judah. You ain't know you was an Israelite. But you did you know what we see today? Today we call it racism. The battle white versus black. Uh, European versus so-called African Americans, right? But did you know that it was biblically set up since the genesis of man? Did you know that? I'm gonna show you something that they don't want you to know. Let's go to Genesis 25. Let's go ahead, we're gonna go there. Genesis 25, and we're gonna give you the story and origin of our ancestor and their ancestors. And we're gonna show you why it is that they hate us so much. I'm gonna show you, listen good, read what you got. The book of Genesis, chapter 25, verse, let's start at 21. Verse 21, read. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife. So now, we the, the story goes, Abraham had a son named Isaac. Y'all familiar? Now Isaac was married. His wife couldn't have babies. He went to the Lord for his wife. Why? Because she was buried. Uh -huh. And the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebecca, his wife, could see. Now she couldn't have babies. He went to the Lord. The Lord blessed him. She had she conceived, meaning got pregnant. Three. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, If it be so, why am I done? Now it said the children struggle within her. What does that mean? She's having what? If she having children with an S, she having what? Twins. Absolutely. So these are twins that she having. But he said they did what? The, the what? Children did what? And the children struggled together within her. The children was fighting inside the womb. They struggled. They was fighting before birth. Read. And she said, if it be so, why am I done? The, it's, she went to the Lord and asked, if this is from the Lord, why is it that this is happening? Why am I having such labor pains, right? We gonna go, we gonna show you why. Listen to it, read. And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. Two what? Two nations are in thy womb. The Lord told her, two nations are in thy womb. What that mean? Different people. They two different people. This is the whole point. They're going to be two different people. They're going to be two different places. They're going to have two different characteristics. We're going to show you. Listen to it, right? And two men of people shall be separated from thy vows. So these two nations got two different mannerisms. Right. They don't move the same. They don't talk the same. They don't walk the same. They got two different manners. Right? Read on. And the one shall be stronger than the other. But he said one of the nations.
faces gonna be stronger than the other. I can, you can just take a guess on who's the strongest, who jumped the highest, who run the fastest. Right, you yeah. know, one of these nations gonna be stronger than the other nation. Read. And the elder shall serve the younger. Read. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. Uh huh. And the first came out red. Oh. That said the first child that was born was born red and hairy. Now you gotta ask yourself, who today is red and hairy? What people on earth is red and hairy? The white people. Huh? Irish. Uh, well, Irish, yeah, and you on point. Europeans. You on point. Europeans in general. Right. Why? Because they, they call red what down here? Red Red necks. Right? But it's not just their neck. If they sit the sun for too long, they get what? They, they get a sunburn. They turn they turn burnt red. Why? Because they have no melanin. Right. Therefore, the blood shows through their skin. You can see their blood through their skin. Yeah. Right, read up. And they called his name Esau. What they call his name? Esau. Then, so this first child is the progenitor or forefather or the ancestor of the so-called white race. His name is Esau. That's right. Right? But we're going to show on. We're going to keep going. Read. And after that came his brother out. And his hand took hold on Esau's hill. And his name was called Jacob. And Esau and Isaac was three score years old when she buried him. Now, note, there's something key to heaven there. The second child came out, his name was Jacob. But it didn't describe what Jacob looked like. Right. So why didn't it describe what Jacob looked like? Because he came out how he was supposed to. Because he came out the same way everybody else looked. Right. right. I'm going to show what did everybody else look like. Let's go to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis 2. You with me? Sure. We're going to see what did Jacob wasn't described. Why? Because he had no abnormalities. The first one, when he came out, they said, we got to write this down. He's red and hairy. Why? Because nobody else ever looked like that. Everybody else looked like Adam, who looked like what? Read. The book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Everybody else looked like Adam, who was made out of the dust of the ground. What color is the dust of the ground? Black. What color is the dirt? It's, it's different shades of brown, right? Right. Every, you look at the dirt, you look at the dirt, it's coming different shades. The deeper you dig into it, the darker it gets. Right. And everybody prior to this man named Esau was always dark brown, was brown. So they, it was abnormal for him to be born red and hairy. That's what they call it today, albino. Why? Because two black people, we can have a, a white child. It's called albino. albino, right? But this man, but this man was born. It was a nation. So it wasn't just like an albino. It's a whole new race of people. You understand? It's deeper. Now let's go into it, right? Exactly. Now read on. Go back to Genesis. Uh, now read on. In the book of Genesis, chapter 25, verse 27. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter. So now the children just grow up. Esau, who was the white man, he became a cunning hunter. He liked to kill deer. He liked to sit in the field. And he like, ain't that the characteristics he got today? Right. You go to Bass Pro Shop here and there with his the weapons. He like, oh, I'm going to hunt me a, I'm going to hunt me something down today. <laughs> They just love killing. You go online, they got dead giraffes, they hold the neck, they got lions, they, they just love hunting, they love the killing. This is their characteristics. Read up. A man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man. Jacob was a plain man. What do he like to do? Dwelling in tent. He like to chill. <laughs> the black man, he like to chill. He like to kick back and chill, man. I ain't trying to go out in the field, man. I ain't trying to do all that. You know what I'm saying? But Esau, he love to hunt. It's giving you characteristics, right? Now jump down to 30. Read. Verse 30. And Esau said to Jacob. No, just finish off where you was at. Because we're going to go into the reason he got hatred for us. Read. Verse 28. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. But Rebekah loved Jacob. And Jacob sought pottage. And Esau came from the field and he was faint. So Esau came out from the field. He was tired. And he did something that he will regret forever. Listen good. Read. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage. So he told his brother, Feed me. The food wasn't ready. It was still raw. Feed me with the red pottage. Why? Because he loved to eat his food raw. Even today, when we going to get our steak, we going to say what? Get, get me well done. They say, just put it on there and look, make it a little hot on the top. Just flip it. That's how they like it. But you ain't supposed to, according to the Bible, you ain't supposed to eat the blood of the animal. That's unlawful. Right. Now, but he wanted that and he wanted it so bad he did what? For in faith, therefore, what 
was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. Jacob says, sell me your birthright. The birthright was the inheritance, the kingdom of God, the blessings. He sold his birthright for, for what? And Esau said, behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, swear to me this day. And he swore to him. And he sold his birthright unto Jacob. This is the reason to this day that the so-called white man has a hatred. It's a deep-rooted hatred that go back to the days of Genesis, to the origin of man. Why? Because they sold their birthright. That's why we the greatest people on the face of the earth. Right. We are the biblical Israelites, and they are nothing thus saith the Lord. That's right. We're going to show you. Give me that second Ezra. Second Ezra. Because we got to build the self-esteem of our people. We got to build the self-esteem up of our people. Most people, they look at the white man, and they have an inferiority complex. Is that not true, my brother? My brother? What's going on? What's your name? Derek, man. How you doing, brother Derek? Right. Now, what you say is true or not true, the majority of our people today, now I'm not saying you in particular, but as a whole, we have, when we look at the white man, we see them as above ourselves. And that we have a lower self-esteem, an image of ourselves. Do you think that? True. That's true, right? But I'm going to show you something that the Bible states about these other nations. In particular, we're talking about the white man, but it goes for all of them outside of Israel. If you don't see yourself on this side, you're not Israelite. Right. What we teach you today is the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we are the true Israelites the Bible speak of. That's, That's right. right. And we're going to show you something that it say about these other nations. Give me that second Ezra 6, 634, I mean 54. Listen good. I'm going to show you this, Derek, before you go. Listen to this one scripture. Read what you got. The book of 2 Ezra, chapter 6, verse 54. And after these, Adam also, who thou madest Lord of all thy creatures. So it's speaking of Adam, right? We all got an understanding of Adam. We just read Adam was formed in the dust of the ground. He was a, a brown seeing man, right? He said of Adam, he was made Lord over all the creatures. Adam was created Lord over the world, right, Read. Of him come we all. We all come from Adam. Right? All our people come from Adam. That's what we say generally, or well, that's what we hear whenever we tell our people we're the chosen people. They say, it don't really matter. All of us come from Adam, right? But read on. And the people also, who thou hast chosen? The chosen people also come from Adam. Read. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sake. The whole world was made for our sakes. Right now, we, we settle it for the crumbs of society. We settle it for the dust of society. But the whole As for the other people. That was metal. Have a good day, y'all. Derek, you know a little something. Yeah, man. So you know you're just you like throwing it. I've read a hundred times already. Why you ain't keeping the commandments then, Derek? Derek, on the back of that thing, you got our address, our phone number. You, Call us. Yes, Call us. Read up. Which also came of Adam. Huh? Thou hast said, they are nothing. The Bible says these other people that come from Adam, they is nothing. Men, all the China men, all of the Arab men, take their women too. Gather them up. God say they equal to one little drop of water that come out of a bucket. Right. Did you know that? I know you didn't know that. You know how I know you didn't know that? I'm going to show you something. Give me Proverbs 3, verse 31. Bring it out. Proverbs 3, verse 31, then we're going to get Leviticus 13. I'm going to show you how I know you didn't know that, right? Because it, the scriptures say you can know a man by his look, right? You can know what type of things that they thinking subconsciously. 
people just by looking at them. I'm gonna show you something, right? Listen to this, read what you got. Let me go Proverbs chapter three, verse 31. Uh -huh. Envy thou not the oppressor. The Bible say for us not to envy the oppressor. Who are oppressor? You said it earlier. So-called white man. I say envy not the oppressor, meaning don't desire to be like them. Don't try to be like them. I'm gonna show you what I mean, read. And choose none of his way. And choose what? None of his way. Do you think you choose any of his ways? Let me ask you a question, right? And I don't want you to be offended by this. Did your hair grow that way naturally? No. No. Who, who, who hair does grow that way naturally? <laughs> I don't want to say it. Yeah, you, yeah, you, because you know what it is. Yeah. It's the so-called white man. That's an unnatural thing for us. But it said, choose none of his ways. You chose one of his ways subconsciously. You may not thought it. You may have pride for your, your people. But subconsciously, somewhere deep down, you got an affinity for the white people because you put that thing in your head. I'm gonna show you last scripture, Leviticus 13. I'm gonna show you what it say about the line hair. Because a lot of our people don't know what the Bible says about blind hair. I'm gonna show you. Listen to this. Read what you got. This is Leviticus chapter 13, verse 29. Uh huh. If a man or woman have a plague upon the head or the beard, then the priest shall see the plague. Jump down to verse 30. Start at 30. Yeah. Uh, then the priest shall see the plague. The Bible says the priest shall see the plague. You know what a plague is, my sister? It's like a disease, like a sickness. They say a priest, a man of God, gonna see a sickness on a person. And what are you gonna say? And behold, if it be in the sight deeper than the skin, and there be in it a yellow thin hair. Today, we call it yellow thin hair oil. We call it what? Don't tell him. Then the priest shall pronounce them unclean. Do what? Unclean. Uh -huh. It is a dry skin, even a leprosy upon the head or the beard. It's called a leprosy. And the priest goes to see it and let that person know you are unclean. Let me ask a question. Yeah, ask a question. What if um, a black man, which is my brother, he like white women? What if a black man? That's a good question. I'm going to let the, the next brother, he's going to come over here. He's a good teacher. He's going to tell you. I don't like it, but that's good life. But, but So you gotta you gotta take that thing out. <laughs> you said you don't know. It's un don't you love God? You came up and said you love God. God said that's unclean. That you're not supposed to do it. It's not me. God said. Don't take it as I said. God said you gotta wear your natural hair. Remember, God hair is white woolly. Underneath that, you got hair like God. Right. Why you gonna wear hair like the oppressor when you got hair like God, my sister? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family.